Hey guys, John Ribs here, uh, talking about the basic resources in Slay the Spire. I'm going to just be talking in one video about all of the different types of floors you can go to. The unknowns, the merchants, the treasures, the rests, the enemies, and the elites. And I'm going to talk about what they're good for, why they're good for it, and how I'm thinking about my path as I look at the map for each act. So I'm not going to do these in order because this is the wrong order to do them in. The first one, <laughs> the first one that I want to talk about is the regular enemy fights. I think these are like sort of oft maligned by people that I talk to, and like rightly so, they typically will deal a bit of damage to you, and the rewards for them are pretty uninspiring. You get a little bit of gold, and you get an option to add a card to your deck but the card is usually not that great, so it's, it's sort of iffy. And like adding a card to your deck, there's a limitation on how ridiculously strong that can really be. So what is the purpose of taking these regular fights? Um, the purpose is basically to look for a card to add to your deck. If you're going to a store and you need a certain amount of gold, like relics typically cost around 300, removing a card, costs a very known amount. You might care about getting a little bit of gold from regular fights. But the main thing is you're doing these fights to get a chance to add a card to your deck. And probably the best time to be taking regular enemy fights is right at the start of the game before you have anything to build around. If you have just the starter deck, the starter deck's pretty bad. You don't know which direction you're going. You are looking for that one strong card or maybe a pair of two strong instrumental cards which tells you okay this is something i can do right now which is strong enough to like beat the act one elites which is strong enough to justify building a deck toward it in general throughout the entire game that's when you really want to be taking the uh regular enemy fights i took a completely random path through this i wish i hadn't done that but um I think the path that I like for this is uh, enemy, go to the merchant and remove one of the bad cards probably, or maybe buy a valuable card if there's one there. Enemy, enemy. And at this point, we can look at our deck. And if we've picked up a card that's strong, incrementally powerful that we can build toward, now we can go question mark, elite fight, campfire, elite fight, chest, elite fight. If we've picked up that card that makes our deck stronger, we've got all the elites right here to fight and the elites give us the best rewards. We'll talk about that later. But if we haven't, we can go somewhere else. We can go here, we can upgrade a card, we can look for another fight. And if we still don't have a great deck, we can upgrade another card. So the enemy fights, I care about them a lot right at the start of the game. Later on, don't really care that much for enemy fights. Um, but at the start of the game, I, I generally like these quite a lot. Uh, let's talk about stores. Stores do two things which are really cool. One is that they let you remove a card from your deck every time you visit them. Uh, it does cost an increasing amount of gold, so you have to, you know, sort of budget your gold accordingly. But removing a card from your deck is great because these starting cards are just worse than the cards that we're adding. So if I remove a strike from my deck right now, uh, there are fewer strikes in my deck, and a higher proportion of my deck is a card like Pommel Strike, which is just much better than Strike. Uh, if I get curses in my deck, I won't be able to remove those at a store, stuff like that. The other thing stores do, there are two other things stores do. One is they let us look for something, some card that's very strong to build our deck around, or maybe flesh out our deck with a card that helps. Typically, I don't love spending gold on adding cards to my deck, because we can add cards to our deck in so many other ways which don't cost gold, but there will be times when the card justifies spending gold on it. Certainly, I don't rule out the option. Um, the other thing that they do that's really important is stores can have relics, and some relics are just so strong that they just bust the game. Just like They're just so, so, so much stronger than anything else you could be getting from cards, for example. And so getting up to 300 gold for hitting stores can be a really important thing to do. On this floor, it looks like we had a path with two stores, in theory. 
If we could go to this store with 300 gold somehow, say we got a starting bonus which gave us more gold, and we go here and we see that there's no relic that we really want, spending all the gold isn't necessarily a good idea. We might want to just remove a card, and then we'll be able to get a lot of gold and maybe go to this store later and have enough gold to have another chance at a relic. So basically what I'm saying is floating enough gold to always have a chance to buy a really strong relic at the store has quite a lot of value, and it's something that you should be thinking about. You can also get potions at a store, so for here and we need a little bit of help in the boss fight, we could buy a potion that might help. Um, and keeping in mind that we full heal it. Okay, this is getting complicated. Anyway, those are the things to think about there. Let's talk about campfires. Um, I think there are a lot of people who really like paths with most campfires uh, through acts. I tend to prefer paths with most elites with the caveat that they're only good if you can actually kill the elites. But campfires are, are very, very strong. And the reason is that they let you upgrade cards. So if we upgrade our pommel strike, now it's a better card. This is, this is a very, very valuable thing to do. There are cards in your deck which really benefit from upgrading a lot. Bash is a very good first upgrade on Ironclad because getting three vulnerable instead of two vulnerable is a huge difference. Pommel Strike is an incredible upgrade because drawing two cards is a lot better than drawing one card. There are other cards which are much less impactful upgrades. Upgrading a Strike is not a very impactful upgrade because, one, dealing three more damage just... It's just a little bit more damage. There are lots of ways to get damage in this game. But also, two, we don't even want to play Strike on our turn that much. We want to, like, bash Pommel Strike or bash Defend or... Pommel Strike, Defend, Defend, or something like that in this deck. And as the run goes on, unless we get to a point where we just have tons of energy, we're very commonly not going to want to play Strike on our turn at all. So it's okay to have, you know, some really good cards, which you play every time you draw them, and then the other cards don't have to be that good, because often you just don't play them at all. So, yeah, campfires let us upgrade cards, and I think it's important to upgrade the cards which are important to upgrade, but also to recognize that you don't have to upgrade all the cards in your deck, especially if you're only playing like half the cards that you draw anyway. Um, it doesn't matter that much if half the cards you draw aren't great. So, campfires are great. Campfires are also the only reliable way to heal yourself. So, say we're considering an elite path, it's really nice looking at this elite path that there's a campfire right there because we can go to this campfire and heal if that elite beats us up and then we can beat this elite with our with our new health. Uh, there's always a campfire before the boss at the end of the, of the run so you'll always have the option to rest before the final boss to get a little bit of health as well. Elites are the other thing to consider. So elite fights are tougher fights than regular fights for sure. But elite fights give you relics. In this run, we've done two elite fights. We have a Mercury Hourglass, which deals three damage to all enemies at the start of our turn, and a Letter Opener, which deals five damage to all enemies whenever we play three skills in a single turn. Those are a massive upgrade to the strength of our deck. Like, very, very, very large. Um, it's hard to imagine a single card, like even a rare card, which could upgrade our deck as much as these two relics are doing right now. So. Getting relics off elites is very good. If you're strong enough to fight elites, I think you should generally fight elites instead of going to campfires. And if you're not strong enough to fight elites, you generally shouldn't do that. So the question is working out how strong you need to be to fight the elites. And that's actually a pretty knowable thing. There are only three different elites in each act, and you can work out fairly quickly like if you have like a hundred hours in the game is that quickly i don't know you'll start to pick up a very good intuition of how much you need in your deck to reliably kill elites um probably you'll learn all about the act one elites first and then the act two elites and then the act three elites because you'll probably play act one more often since sometimes you die halfway through the run but at this point i i just sort of know intuitively exactly how much my deck has to have to beat Act 1 Elites. And so as I'm building my path to try to work out if I can get a lot of relics, I'm looking at, you know, my deck 
I look at my deck here or whatever, and I ask, is it good enough to kill elites yet? If it is, let's go kill some elites. Cool. The elites in Act 1 are extremely predictable. There's very little variance in the fights that you fight against elites in Act 1. They basically do the same thing every time. Uh, the same is true for Act 2 elites and most of the Act 3 elites. I think the hardest fight in the game, I think actually tougher than any of the end bosses, is there's an Act 3 elite fight with two... They're actually relatively low health enemies, but they have an attack which puts two burns in your deck, and it's random whether or not they use it. So a lot of the time you just kill them, whatever, no big deal. But sometimes they put four burns in your deck like two times in a row. And if you had a small deck and didn't get a great first and second hand, you're just dead. Um, but that's like the highest variance of the elite fights, and that's why it's difficult, because it can have some really nasty variance for you. The rest of the elite fights are, are pretty knowable, and you sort of understand exactly what's going to happen in them and can play around them once you get used to fighting them. So, yeah. That's elite fights, and then treasure is is treasure. Treasure is always the same. You go into a room, you click on a box, you get something. Cool. Um, it would be cool if you could get more treasure somehow, and question marks can actually have treasure, but in general, there's no way to get all three of these treasures because we keep going this way, so we generally get one treasure per act and, and whatever other chests we get from like killing the boss and things like that. The last thing to talk about is question marks. And question marks are sort of fascinating. If you play faster than light at all, I think of question marks much the same as I think of empty jumps in faster than light. Where in faster than light, fighting ships gives you um, very reliable, constant return on your jump. You're always gaining stuff constantly. Question marks give you, you know, bad things sometimes. Sometimes they just don't really do anything at all. Sometimes they give you really good stuff. It's it's very variable. And the things they give operate on sort of perplexing axes. Like sometimes they give you a card to your deck which you weren't expecting to have and you're not even sure if it's good. Sometimes they give you like 100 gold and it's like, oh, now I have to work out what to do with 100 gold. Um, Sometimes they let you remove a card from your deck, and that's cool. Sometimes they take 35 health away from you and give you a relic, and, like... These, these things are all just really difficult to analyze the value of, because 35 health, a relic? How good's the relic? Was our health important right now? I don't know. So question marks are quite random and unpredictable. And... Question marks, I think, go up in value if regular fights are dealing a lot of damage to us, but we're already strong enough to kill the end of Act Elite. Um, and especially if we're strong enough to kill the regular Elites too. Because question marks will protect you from fights somewhat, where fights generally cost you health. If you're beating fights reliably and don't need a like very high variance reward from a question mark for your deck to be good, I don't think that question marks are that good. Um, if you know that you're gonna beat up on enemies right here, then why would you go here? There's no good reason. All right, and that is all of the floors. So this has just been a, a very rough overview of the resources going on in this game and what I'm thinking about with them. Apparently I've been in this game for an hour and 20 minutes so I guess there's about that much footage to watch. I hope you guys enjoy it all. Please give me feedback on things you found particularly interesting, things you'd like to go like me to go more in depth in, stuff like that. And I have a lot of other um, Slay the Spire videos that I would like to make. I hope that you're okay with this level of quality because realistically I stream this game 12 hours a day and sleep sometimes so this is about what I can do for you. Um, yeah I hope that you have enjoyed 
it's been fun getting all of these thoughts out on video and uh, i hope to see you next time bye guys <laughs>